this second video is a lot to take in. There's a lot of information in it. I'm just trying to basically skim over some of the stuff that God has been showing me. This is not recent. I have been studying it for a while. The more videos that I do, the more people I'm speaking to. And I feel that there is an understanding with the people watching the videos that I don't just study one thing and stick to that. I study several things at once. And the way God uh, teaches me and what he shows me is quite astounding in relation to all of these different pieces that tie together with what I already know. And of course, then it becomes a more compounded truth and it solidifies what God has been speaking to me through his word. So the chapter and book and uh, verses that I want to draw your attention to, really it's only just one verse for now, is Isaiah 61 verse 3. And that particular verse is talking about trading in um, ashes for beauty. And of course, I did a study on beauty. I did a study on ashes. And I did a study on fire because you can't get ashes without fire. And of course, I looked at both the Hebrew and Greek where those definitions were available. And I looked at all of them, not the ones that I just assume are the right ones. I took it in collectively because God's ways and his thoughts are higher than mine. So I know there's so much more he wants to share with me so that I can share it with other people. So if you look at the definition, at several definitions of the word beauty, it means to give form, to give shape, and it actually means a favorable shape. So that's where the word beautiful comes from, handsome. So it gives a form and shape to something. And then if you look up the word ashes, of course, it means the literal uh, definition, um, the same as in English, but it also has in the definitions moving to and fro or going to and fro, which is interesting because um, there are a couple of times that the Bible uses that particular phrase. And one of them is when the enemy comes before God and God says, hey, where did you come from? And the enemy's response is going to and fro in the earth. And what's indicative of that response from the enemy is the fact that he doesn't have a place to sit. So he doesn't have a place in heaven anymore because he was cast out. And he doesn't have a place in the earth to sit because he's walking to and fro. And it's in the gerund form. It is in the present tense. So he is always walking to and fro because he does not have a place to sit. So that being said... Ashes refers to not having a place. And another definition of ashes is temporary, which also indicates the status of the enemy, that he is just temporary and that difficult circumstances are temporary. They come and they go. And what remains steadfast is God. And so if you tie those in together, um, and you look at the very first part of Isaiah 61, the very first part says, um, we are called to console those who mourn in Zion. But if you look at the side notes, console actually means to appoint. And when you appoint somebody, you're appointing them to a place. So when you're consoling people, when God's talking about this mourning and the sorrow and trading in, we're trading in something temporary for something permanent. We're trading in something that doesn't give us a place for a place. And not only is it just a place, it is a place of setting. For example, Jesus was set on the throne. So that being said, if you look at the definitions for fire, of course, there are literal definitions for that. But one definition in the Hebrew that refers to fire is length of days. And I found that really interesting because um, in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were given length of days. And when God used fire to protect Israel and um, he was a pillar of fire in the night, it lengthened their days. He gave them more days. And the fire... 
um, that Gideon covered where they had the torches and they covered it and it caused confusion in um, the enemy's camp when they took them off. It gave Gideon and the children of the Lord length of days. It gave them more days to live. And of course, I'm just glossing over this. But if you think of God, who is the ancient of days, he is the God of fire and the God who responds and answers with fire. That means he's, his days are forever. His days are not temporary. And he does not walk to and fro. He is seated. He is set. And so I just want you to consider all of those things um, in relation to what I'm going to say. So I said all that as a preface. So the other things that I have been studying have been uh, Solomon's temple. And the temple is different than the tabernacle. And there were two tabernacles and there were two temples. The one I'm talking about right now is Solomon's temple. And on Solomon's temple were uh, designs that he designed himself. And he etched or inscribed or engraved on the uh, temple walls, on the inner part of the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, and on the inner part of the sanctuary before you would enter or before the um, priest could enter into the most holy place. Um, cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what God was talking about when he mentioned palm trees. And I have studied this before. I asked God before about wisdom about this, understanding how to figure this out. And it didn't dawn on me until you look at um, Isaiah 49, verse 16. And if you take a look at Isaiah 49, 16, again, this is in my second book. It's just astounding. Um, let me see here. 49, 16. He's talking to the children of Israel and he's talking about Jerusalem, that he will not forget them. He will set them forever before his eyes. And verse 16 says, see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. In the Bible that I have, any added words in English are italicized. And that's for a reason is because the people interpreting the Hebrew and the Greek were doing their best to interpret with what they had. So in verse 16, it says, see, I have inscribed you on the palms and of my hands is italicized. That means that verse is saying, I have inscribed you on the palms, the palm trees. And palm trees were engraved on the temple. And the temple is where they brought their sacrifice so that God would not be angry with them, so that they could meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And if you do a study of the temple, there are palm trees placed at the entrance of the temple, two of them, one on the right and one on the left. And that is where God says we are inscribed. Let me take it a, a little bit further. Again, I said this was a lot, but if you take it a little bit further and you look at other places in the Bible where they have palm trees or palm branches, one is in the booths that they created um, for the festivals that create a covering. And the other is when Jesus made entrance um, before he was to be crucified on Palm Sunday, where they waved the palm branches. And I don't know a whole lot about this particular part or about the tradition, but the palm branches, I believe, from the year prior were to be burned to become ashes so that they could have new ones the following year. So then it brings me back to Isaiah 61, where it talks about we trade our ashes in and get beauty. This is where Ash Wednesday comes from, that God takes the ashes, the to and fro of our life, the temporariness, the things that come and go that the enemy sends to our lives to try to cause chaos. He takes all of those things and he takes the things that the enemy has destroyed in our lives that we feel have been burned away. And you can even flip it and talk about the things that God purifies and burns away in us. And he takes those ashes from us. He takes the temporary 
he takes a to and fro-ness and he returns us and gives us beauty. And he gives us a form and he gives us a place. And I would have to say that is crazy information. And that is crazy truth. And that is undeniable truth. So I just want to present that to you, that we are inscribed on the palms and that if we are to call on the God of fire and he lights our lives on fire, we are then the light at the entrance to the temple of the Lord. We become that light of people who sat in great darkness. They saw a great light. They saw the sacrifice. They saw Jesus. And although some people say, oh, the Old Testament, you know, like we have a new covenant. Yes, we do. But we are the temple of the Lord. And the palm trees that we're inscribed on, that God names us and gives us things, gives us names so that we can declare his goodness. And we understand the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we could carry the light to the world, so that we could break the, the things that cover us and shine in the darkness. So I know this video is longer, but I, I pray that you would seek out what some of this means. And I pray that you would understand that God is inscribing you in a place that will never die. And he is offering you beauty. He is offering you a length of days, which means everlasting life. And um, I just leave you with that.